This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. says underneath Walter Sabo. It could say Walter Sterling. It could. It could, but it doesn't. Wait, let me get my coffee over here. Ah, see, a big cup of joe right there. Mm. Mm. And Walter Sabo is an old friend. Uh, first of, He's a friend first of all. Uh, then he's a uh, associate in my, my former line of work. Uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, he's, he's just all around a good guy that I enjoy talking thank to. Thank you. Yeah, so, As are you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, but uh, also you were, you were a consultant, a radio consultant, which is, a, uh, is pretty much a dis, uh, extinct uh, job category, <laughs> isn't it? There was a time when if there were 50 radio stations in a city. Yeah. That meant that yeah. your station had 49 competitors, and therefore they looked for help from consultants, people to give them outside advice. Now that it's a consolidated industry where five companies might own all of those 50 stations, mm. and all your competitors are down the hall, <laughs> they don't really need um, outside advice because they can get advice down the hall. I, I knew this business was passing me by the day that I went to work for Clear Channel in San Francisco. Yes. After a, a bit of a time off, okay, and I come back and I'm and I'm at uh, working there doing a show every morning, and my competitor is next door. It's strange. In, in the office right next to me, the studio right <laughs> next to me, it happened to be Jim Lang, by the way. Uh, it's also strange that in a given cluster of stations in one building same building mm -hmm. half of them can be suicidal when the rating book comes out and the other half is going <laughs> to a steak dinner so it's uh it's a very weird thing well i always loved when ratings came out how you were one month you were a hero yeah oh congratulations alex look at those numbers and we all know they went up and down and up and down and up right. and down and so next month you're like, oh, well, don't even talk to him in the hallway. <laughs> you know? Right. It, you know, so you're no longer the hero. And I, uh, that's what I guess I hated about the business. I was just in it to entertain. But every month we would gather around this, uh, well, in those days it was like uh, um, a thing that came through. I can't remember. It wasn't a teletype exactly, but it was the... The ratings would come through, and they come through line by line as they would print yeah. out. And you're waiting for yours and waiting for yours. And when yours finally came, you were either ecstatic or just unbelievably depressed. I knew a few smart program directors mm -hmm. who, no matter what, told the talent that you, you had great ratings, your ratings went up. That's all they'd ever say to the talent. Yeah. And therefore, the, the de sea of depression didn't happen. <laughs> and yeah, in those if, stations, by the way, yeah. it worked because usually the ratings did go up because the air talent was happy. Well, that has a lot to do with it, you know. Um, when you used to tell people, uh, uh, consult them, did you consult them about how to run their radio stations emotionally? In other words, how to get the best out of your people with good feelings and so on? Yes, this is what I would do. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing I would tell management. And by the way, this is important, I think, for any business. Okay. Any, yeah, any business where you're making something in-house, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a uh, pottery. Mm -hmm. Well, I just uh, lost Creative you. thing on the radio. Yeah. This is the most important thing. 
it sounds so silly, but it's God awful true. When you walk by the people doing the creating of something, Mm -hmm. pottery, painting, Mm -hmm. uh, designing, architect, whatever it is, when you walk by those people, look at them and smile and say, great to see you. Make it up. No matter how miserable your day is, you smile and look at them and say, boy, it's great to see you. And then the, the curtain of paranoia is lifted over the creative team and you're a hero. If you walk by them and you've just eaten a bad lunch mm-hmm. and you have gas mm-hmm. and you hold your stomach and go, uh, uh, they'll think it's about them. <laughs> And uh, this is, you know, most most creative run businesses are mm. such that when the boss closes her door, everybody thinks she's talking about them. Right. So keep your door open. That was one of the tricks of Leonard Goldenson. Leonard Goldenson, the chairman of ABC, BC. the founder, mm-hmm. yeah. the founder of ABC, he had a rule passed down to his managers, which is, Anybody on the air can come and see me whenever they want. And they would. Jim Kerr, the morning man at WPLJ in New York, Mm -hmm. would frequently go up and just walk into Leonard Goldenson's office and chat. And Leonard loved it. I worked there. I didn't know I could do that. You could have done that. I didn't know I could do that. If I had, maybe I'd still be at ABC. (laughs) Well, you might have been or not. Mm. Or you might have left sooner. Well, Jim Kerr was a very smart person that way. He was a very smart person. And uh, the other thing about ABC that was that was very special mm-hmm. is ABC was tipped in favor of people on the air. If you were on the air, they liked you. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, if you were a creative person, they liked you. And unlike most companies, the management at ABC knew what was good on the air. If, if it was good on the air, they knew it. They knew what it sounded like, felt mm-hmm. like, they knew it. And if it wasn't right, they knew that too. But it was intuitive to them because it was so important to that chairman that you make a good show. You mm-hmm. had to make a good show. And the other great thing about ABC, which was incredible, mm-hmm. you must be ethical. You must behave. So the trade-off was, make a good show, mm-hmm. try your luck on the air, dare to be great, but do not break the rules. That's how they ran their business, and that sounds pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, I didn't notice that when I worked there, but uh, because, it, well, I don't want to really get into that, but you get to the days of FM, they didn't treat exactly the same way. I don't think they understood all these people with long hair coming in and you know, playing music uh, uh, that they brought in from home. You know, they they didn't they didn't understand that completely. They just knew that it was working. Well, they didn't understand it at NBC, and they didn't understand it at at uh, uh, CBS, and they didn't understand it at most companies, which is why it happened. So the way it happened at most companies was AM was radio, mm-hmm. and FM was really strange and um they and it only happened because the fcc changed the rule which was you could no longer simulcast right so then the then the fms you had to do something with the fms you know it's very interesting people might find this interesting you know i don't i don't want to get too too much into radio talk personally because then we leave people out there but uh uh i found that in the early days of radio here in New York, your AM station, we had two levels on the on the tuner, okay? You had AM, you had FM below it, all right? And that the AM for ABC, for instance, was directly above the FM on that dial. They actually picked their dial position so they would be right in the, am I right about that? Do you think on the radio sets that might have been um, coincidental? No, it, it literally you always had this AM on the top, FM right. on the bottom. And if you turn to FM, you then use the FM dial. But on the actual 
strips. Radio. Well, the, if they pulled that off, that's quite something. Yeah, well, I mean, ABC was right on top of ABC FM. Now, at NBC, to show you the priority of uh, AM and FM relative to each other in the mm -hmm. corporate eye, when you got off the elevator in San Francisco, the signage said in bold metal letters, the signage said KNBR Radio, mm -hmm. KYUU FM. Oh, really? In Chicago, it said WMAQ Radio, WKQX FM. By the way, when you were in San Francisco, did you ever yes. get to go into the old NBC, ABC building? What was called Radio City, San Francisco? No, they had torn it down by the time. No, it's still there. The really? building is still there. I worked there when I worked for KBHK. My father worked there when he when he was doing, you know, national radio programs and was part of the orchestra. And when I was taking a break doing my TV uh, thing because we were editing it and so on, I would go into that big studio and it still had the, the radio booth, the control booth, and it had the place where the audience sat and it had this stage. And uh, I just sat there and I kind of communicated with my father. I mean, it was just a wonderful thing. Uh, but, pretty sweet. but they had this wonderful mural of all the countries of the world getting radio with a big hand on the dial. It was a mosaic. It was a beautiful building. Still is. I think the mosaic is still there. Uh, what is it used for now? Uh, who knows? It could be an insurance company for all I know. You know? Yeah, but we want the, we want the mosaic. Yes. Oh, I once said if they ever decide to tear it down, I want to buy it piece by piece, you know, and reassemble it somewhere. It's it's just beautiful. I don't know if it's it should still be there. I think the building was protected. Uh, so who knows? Anyway, so before we started our conversation, it was kind of interesting. Yes. In that you you said you know the thing about Zoom is you suddenly realize you know how old you're getting and da da da. What what do you mean by that exactly? I mean that when I go on Zoom, yeah, I can yeah. see uh, unfiltered and unadulterated mm -hmm. the fact that I am I have less hair than the last time I went on Zoom, mm -hmm. and then my cheeks are fatter than the last time I went on Zoom. <laughs> Well, There's I, no way around it. Yeah, I find these bags are worse during the day because I have sunlight coming in on top of the lighting that I have here. And um, I didn't take care of those when I took care of the rest of the eyes because you notice my eyes are now wider open. So, yeah. The, you had an operation? Did what? you have an operation? Yeah. Did you have an operation? Yeah. They, you did. They did the, yeah, the, it was it was medical because they need to do the lids because they had come halfway down into my pupil so that it was a little harder for me to see. So they had to raise these. So if you notice, my eyes are bigger now. The people I know who have had that operation said that when it was over, the recovery hurt like hell. No. Mm -mm. No. So no. you had the right doctor. Yeah, no, I had no, no real problem at all. Since we've been on here, I had cataract surgery. Yeah, well, cataracts are simple. You know, they didn't used to be, but they are now. It's a miracle that it's very simple and very fast, but I have to disclose this to you and only to you. Mm -hmm. well, well, you're not that, saying it only to me because there are people watching this. I would do that. I, I view your your viewer as you. Oh, okay. Uh, I, would, um, I would have that surgery any time because I have never had a better experience stoned out of my mind. <laughs> it was great. I mean, what they pump into you oh, is they, magic. They didn't pump anything into me. All they did was dead in the eyeball. That's no fun. And, and went through things. No, they didn't give me a drug. Uh, no. It was liquid <sighs> happiness. <laughs> it was li liquid nirvana. Yeah. There's this, uh, there, they give you, um, they put you out sometimes for certain things. My wife loves it because she claims the best moment of her life is when, let me explain it, it's like propofol. It it has like, just before you go out, there's just this. Just before. Just yeah. before, it's like, a, like a matter of seconds, you get this, whoa! 
Right. And she loves that. That's what I had. She's right. That was the medication. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. But I wasn't out. It was, uh, I was awake, mm. but it didn't matter. Yeah. Well, when they did the eyes, when they did the eyes, they put me on a, a kind of a, I was awake. I knew what was going on because they needed me awake so I could open my eyes and move them and so on so they could see it, you know. Uh, but it was it was work. It was uh, uh, I I it, that, the, the whole procedure was not comfortable. I thought they were going to just put me out and that would be it. They won't do that anymore. Um, it's take, very hard yeah. to get them to put you out. Like I would have assumed they would have done that too, and I bet you five years ago they would have. But today, man, to get you, to get you to be get them to put you out, that's like, well made. Yeah. Well, here's what happened. When I went to go get the seeds and planted my prostate, right, uh, for, for my prostate cancer, uh, they uh, couldn't put me out. They said I was too old, and they didn't want to take the chance of putting me out. I'm going, come on. I still get put out for stuff. But anyway, they said, we're going to give you a spinal, which I thought would be dreadful, but it wasn't. Dreadful. No, it didn't hurt at all. Didn't okay. hurt at all. Okay. Good. But then I became a paraplegic. Nothing, felt nothing below my midsection. Uh, and they put me in there and they started working on me. And they gave me a little bit of like uh, Valium and stuff to keep me kind of in a little bit in La La Land. But I wasn't out. Okay. Because they didn't want to put me out. So I'm sitting there. And suddenly, for the first time in my life, I'm able to be in the middle of an operation and I can hear everything that's going on. And I thought they would go, sutures, scalpel, oh, nurse, wipe my brow, blah, 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 blah. No, it's like, so what are you doing this weekend? Right. <laughs> you know, oh, I don't know. Uh, last weekend, my wife and I went to the shore and I'm going, where's all this drama I see on TV? You know? So. By the way, the guy that did my seeds, remember years ago, Rudy Giuliani had his, had seeds implanted in his prostate? Yeah, same guy. Same guy, yeah, yeah. And it was successful. Oh, obviously it was successful. He's been around for... No, I mean you. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. Well, I mean, we'll find out if I have any kind of resurgence or whatever next month because I get another PSA test. But the last time I got it, it was zero. They Undetectable. I saw my general, my uh, personal care physician, whatever they call it, this week. And <coughs> he did the blood work and then he calls me at home and he, he runs down all of the stuff. He says, normal, 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 normal. There's nothing wrong with you. He's from uh, the Ukraine or something. He goes, there's nothing wrong with you. Absolutely nothing. Everything's perfect. And I said, really? I said, then there's no justice. And he said, don't push it. <laughs> well, so you got a good bill of health. I had a great bill of health, and there's no justice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I've i gotten to the point where I think my doctor actually always likes, he worries about everything. Okay, at my age, they just worry about everything. You get, when you get to be my age, they'll worry about everything. Uh, Blood's a little off. They, 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 they go crazy. They got to do something about that, you know. But I, what I don't want to get into, and uh, this is now we're losing all the young people here. Uh, although we don't have any young people listening to us anyway, because they you don't know nobody wants to listen to an old guy. You anyway, but uh, well, where was I? I got all welled up and stuff. You don't want to get into oh, something. Oh, oh you don't want to get into what I call the doctor mill. The doctor says no, you, you don't. You know, uh, your uh, your blood levels are low. We have to send you to a phlebotomist. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know and uh, we have to do this, and you got to go to so and so. And what? I mean, Marjorie, my wife, has. I th I think her doctors are her major. You're really tired this morning, right? Uh, no, I apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's all right. The audience yawns at the show, so why shouldn't you? No, it yeah. isn't that. Anyway, so so she she I said that if she didn't have medical uh, doctor appointments, she wouldn't have any social life at all. Yeah. yeah, and how has she recovered from her her accident? Her accident. Oh, that was a 
a long time ago. That's when she was. But she's okay. Yeah, her her knee. Yeah, it still bothers her on a cold day. You know, I mean, she had the 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 knee literally had metal put in it to take care of it. But she was doing. She was walking down the street out of work on Madison Avenue. And some tourist pushed her. She fell to the ground. Boom. Killed her knee. So she had to have a pin put in her head, some metal put in to fix it. So. Now, to appeal to young people, okay, I have a homework assignment for you. For, for me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. That's my homework. You need to go see the movie Licorice Pizza. I, I saw it. I loved it. I hated it. Why did you hate it? It was boring. I mean, if uh, it, it ask me to describe the movie. You can't. It's all about a waterbed salesman. You know, I mean, I watched, we watched half of it and turned it off. Wow. We don't understand what people see in that picture. I, I will tell you a picture we saw the other day that's terrific. Got the best performance, I think, of the year. And I didn't think I would like it. King Richard, the film about uh, uh, Serena and, and Venus's Williams's father and him raising them to be tennis players. And Will Smith is sensational. It's a great story. Yeah, and it's he's sensational. But Licorice Pizza, what was it about, like, tell me, what was it that you liked about Licorice Pizza? It was a painting turned into a movie. It was a painting about 1973 that was turned into a movie. The dialogue between the two of them was perfect. The things they were afraid of as 15 and 25 year olds was exactly right. Mm -hmm. It looked like the San Fernando Valley in 1973. Mm -hmm. It captured everything at that moment in time. And in my opinion, 1973 was the worst year in history for culture, music. I mean, remember, Helen Reddy had a hit in 1973. I know, 1973. Everybody talks about that period of time. Um, but their, their dialogue and their acting, when the two of them were mm -hmm. talking to each other, was like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly right. They got it exactly right. Um, a moment in time and two people who have never been on the screen before. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, 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 we got about halfway through it and just went, life's too short. And they, they, we got to the point where they meet up with John Peters, and I'm going, come on, you know. Yeah, but in L.A., that would happen. Well, yeah, but, you know, I just, I, I, <laughs> anyway, I, 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 I disagree about that film. But you see any other movies you liked? And then it got me interested in the band she's in, in Haim. Mm -hmm. And the band she's in, it turns out, is spectacular. Now let's explain that the uh, uh, director of the film found this family that he f fell in love with. I think he did a documentary on them. Uh, they, all, all the girls in it are singers. And uh, so in the movie, uh, the girl is played by... I can't remember her name now, something Heim. Alana Heim. Alana Heim. And then she has two sisters who sing with her in the group. They're in the film as her sisters, and then yes. her mother and father play the mother and father. In the film. Right. And then um, the boy is played by um, that famous actor who killed himself. Um Damn it. Famous. Actor. Anyway, so it was just, I found it just perfect. Oh, okay. A perfect right. portrayal. I'm, I may go back and just have a look at it. Well, the it thing again. about, so anyway, it, it led me to the band Heim, mm -hmm. which has been very successful for 10 years. That's a hit band. Mm -hmm. um, and they have toured successfully, made successful albums, highly regarded in the music industry. Uh, because they put on incredibly entertaining shows. Right. Their shows are spectacular. And she's very funny about going from being in a band to being the star of a movie. She said, I used to just be third from the left. So this is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's she's charming and compelling and a great talent, a true talent. Yeah. Now, what else have I seen? 
Uh, I loved Becoming Anna. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Becoming Anna. Uh, Marjorie. Becoming Anna. Oh, oh it's, I think Marjorie watched that. I yeah, she would that. love that. Yeah. It's about that that girl who yeah who who takes uh, cons everybody cons everybody yeah well done and uh, what else have I seen that's actually a series and it's on Netflix yeah I saw it and uh, it was first a series in the New York Post it was mm -hmm. the sort of thing that they love you know I just noticed whenever I talk to you time just flies by it's fascinating it's time because of me flies by I love doing these things with you. Can you do them another co a couple of weeks from now? Yeah, when do you want to do it? Well, I'll, I'll after we're through here, we'll talk and I'll we'll figure out a day. Uh, this is uh, Walter Sable, but he's Walter Sterling, and he can be heard on how many radio stations now? About eighty stations at ten p.m. on Sunday night, ten p.m. to one a.m. Stations like KMOX St. Louis, KDKA Pittsburgh, uh, KMBZ in Kansas City, stations like that. Yeah. So uh, he, if they scream at the Demo if it's a if it's a station that screams at the Democrats, I'm on that station. Oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, there he goes, uh, uh, Walter Sterling, Walter Sabo. Thanks. Thank you for teaching us all how to do talk radio, Mister Bennett. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Oh yeah, I'm the master. You're anyway, the master. <laughs> talk, you're always you're the guy. I I always call him because he's really flattering to me. Yeah, but okay. it's true. Yeah. Thank you. Thank bye bye. You. This is Gavnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, hey, there we go. Okay, wait a minute, got to turn on the lights too. I keep forgetting all this stuff. And now I'm, am I out of sync? No, I'm pretty much in sync. Okay, I don't care anymore. I'm trying a different, uh, a different um, algorithm for sending this show out. And um, unfortunately, uh, it may be causing some problems. Who knows? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Now, what happened was, is I, uh, oh, I, I won't even, I'm not even going to get into it. Boy, I just, I'm getting so tired of just putting out one fire after another. I just hate it. I just hate it. Anyway. So, anyway, I think we're okay here, and uh, I think we're ready to talk to our citizen panel, and already... Uh, we have, uh, let's see, Kevin's here, and uh, Alan's here, and um, Charlie, you're here. Yep, uh, rained I, out. I, I guess you got rained out, yeah. Uh, Charlie uh, is a, uh, he umpires, he uh, coaches. What, what do you do? What is that? Umpire. Umpire. And every, yep. ga every game's got to have an umpire, right? <laughs> yep. You can't get along without the umpire. <laughs> huh? Usually we have two umpires. Two umpires. Oh wow, uh, uh, riches! Uh, if yep. there ever was one. Anyway, uh, if people notice, our our picture is uh, is a bit nicer tonight, uh, and uh, better quality and so on. But it's only because I changed the various settings, but it is causing certain problems. So uh, we'll just uh, you know we'll, we'll just uh, bear with them tonight. And maybe tomorrow night and see if I can get everything fixed just right. Because uh, uh, if, you, if you notice the picture, it's a little cleaner tonight, you know. But I can't let it, I, I, forget it. I don't even want to say what I did that screwed things up tonight. But. You, know, you know what it is? This whole thing of doing GabNet is like putting one fire out after another. Yep. You know, and... and uh, I'm sorry, you know, the technology I'm using is uh, state-of-the-art, but it isn't uh, that state-of-the-art. So, anyway. How y'all doing tonight, guys? I'm good. Horrific. You, you doing, Happy to be indoors. Happy to be indoors. Why? Is it cold it's out there? It's 35 degrees outside. Mm. <laughs> if, if it wasn't raining, I'd be out there freezing my butt off. It's 35 degrees, believe it or not, in... Uh, in in uh, Texas, okay. Austin, Texas, yeah. In ostentatious, here. In ostentatious, and um, um, here, guess what it is? 
Well, you're not going to guess. Okay, so you're not going to play 60, the game. 30. What? Huh? 30 yeah. degrees. 33. 33. Well, it's because you, you, but wait a minute, how do you know? You're not up in Connecticut. I just guess. You just guessed? <laughs> Are you missing the cold weather? No. No. But unfortunately, in another day, we are leaving and coming back home. Oh, boy. Although it'll probably take about two weeks to get home. What do you mean it'll take you two weeks to get two home? Two weeks? We have to stop and see uh, everybody that we know. Oh, I, oh. I thought you were that bad a driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a that minute. too. <laughs> Got to find a car to steal first. Where is Brian calling from? He must be outdoors. <laughs> no. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, can, yeah. we can hear you. We he barely can see you, however. He's on I-5. I'm in my car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the car. I'm going to Lodi. We're going to Lodi. <laughs> going to Lodi. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm driving to Lodi on the Friday, so for Friday. Or Friday, on a Thursday. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Lodi is is where you work, right? Yeah, but I live in San Jose. So why are you so, going to Lodi at night? Because I sleep there tonight, and then I'm there in the morning for some early meetings, and then there to work during the day. Oh, okay. All right. Because okay. if, I, if I drive, it's like two-hour drive. So if I drive in the morning, it's too much. So, you know, then I just got to drive home. Yeah, so I like going there. I'll spend the night the night before I work. Yeah. Well, why don't we try and see if tonight on this show we can attempt to make it as boring as is humanly possible <laughs> uh, and see how low we can get in numbers. O already they're going up. <laughs> Who else is on? I can't even see anybody. Oh, well, no? Oh, wow. Oh, well, you got, you got Kevin and okay. you got Alan. And you got Charlie Wallace, and you got Jeff, and who knows who else okay. will call Brian. But if you have yeah. if you have nothing to say, give us a call, folks. Um, tell us something boring, Kevin. How about that? Uh, that was Why it. Why would you that... assume Kevin would would be the one? Oh, Bill is in your favorite city, Alex. He's in. Pahrump tonight. He's in Pahrump tonight. Yes, oh, he's he's Pahrumping in it, it, it. Yeah. Yeah, for four hey, nights yeah. of training. Hmm? Four days of training. Four days of training. Four days of training. What? It, how, hey, it, what your, it, your what, buddy Sabo, your buddy Sabo is pretty good. I, I, I was happy. At first, I thought that was a repeat. No. But it was no. good to see. I know it's because I, after you guys started talking, I could tell. Yeah. But, you know, he talks about, he talks about, you know, no matter what kind of mood you're in, you know, mm -hmm. you don't show that. And like you started saying, you know, that goes in to everybody in business. And every single morning I say good morning to everybody when I'd walk through the factory mm -hmm. and you get so much respect, no matter how, how bad your day or how bad your morning is. And I've had bosses that walk by right by my office in the morning and never say hi. Never say hi. And that right. just irritate me. Irritate yep. me. Yep. Well, there are. A simple, a simple good morning gets a long way with people. Well, there was a point I was going to go for, and I never got around to it. Was that what I always said about radio and about doing a program is that the way a radio station is sounds and the way the programs sound is whatever has been happening in the halls. You know, because you bring that into the studio. And if it's a positive vibe out in the hallway and somebody just made you laugh and you made them laugh and all that, hey, we're off to the races. Good time to be had by all, you know? Uh, but, um, uh, you know, it is important that uh, you keep a good feeling around the hallways because that's going to pass itself off onto the work you're doing. So... Good for you, Brian, that you know that nobody had to teach you that. You know. Are you still there, Brian? Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to make sure. <laughs> yes, I'm still there. Yeah, well, we can't see you now. Well, all I'm saying is that I'm... you're going to be accused later on of having done this show in blackface. <laughs> blackface? Oh, nice. <laughs> 
Hey, we got another Brian here. Yeah, we have another Brian. We have two Brian's. This is a Brian with. But he's uh, not in the tub. <laughs> no, you're not in the tub tonight. Yeah, I still shave my pecker if you want that. No, 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 no. Don't demonetize the show. Don't demonetize the show by doing something with your pecker. Boy, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, anyway, uh, so I was... Can you guess what I'm eating? Uh, Can you guess what I'm eating tonight? Pecker? Eating your peckers? Well, I can't, no. I can't, we can't see... I know, that's the whole point. Okay, I'd say a navel orange. <laughs> an apple. Bell pepper. How are the numbers Ooh, doing? Oh, Kevin, the... Kevin. I have jicama and bell peppers. I saw drive a yellow oh. shadow just a second ago, so it must have been that. Oh, really? Because I was just looking at the numbers, and we're we're down now. We're, we've gone down. There we go. So let's yeah. keep think, let's, let's keep trying to guess what, uh, what Brian's going to eat next. <laughs> So let's 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 guess what exit he's going by. Oh, that's a good one. Let me I know see. all of them on the freight, on the highway he's on. Are you on ninety nine or are you on five? No, I just started, so I'm on six eighty going through okay. Fremont right now. Okay, yeah. so you're at uh Fremont. you got Automall Parkway yet? Oh my god, and Durham Road, yes, I just passed <laughs> the sign. <laughs> I win. Exit, I got one point. Exit fourteen. And I'll bet, I'll bet you're coming up to Washington Boulevard. Yeah. See, Washington, you're... Mission, and Vargas. Yeah, you guys are awesome. And then Sonoma Boulevard's right after that. And you people Wave out it there. Out as you go by. And you people you out... go by the truck scales going down the hill. You, yeah. You I'm people... waving at you right now, Brian. You people, people out there. Okay, did... I'll, I'll, hey. What? Alan, I'm going to honk. Let's okay, see, go see ahead. Hear me. Oh, yeah, I you hear me. me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, you heard him on the Zoom call. He didn't, he didn't ask if I if I could hear him outside. <laughs> I heard the Zoom call just like all you did. I heard him all the way down here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Too. Well, see, folks. Must be an air horn. See, folks. Now that's great for a show like this, Hooters. You know. <laughs> so. anyway. I could tell you every exit from from where you are all the way up to yeah. Lodi if you want. I did that route three. What's three the days? next What's the next exit after years. the one he's at? What's that? What's the next Washington. exit after the one he's at right now? It's probably Washington or Mission Boulevard. And, and what is Washington Boulevard? And what's the other <laughs> one on the same sign? The exit, same exit. Washington uh, and what? Mission is on the other side. Nah, yeah, Mission on the other side. But it's Irvington. Irvington. Yeah, yeah, because Mission loops around and it hits you twice. Yeah, exactly. Mission will hit you before you go, and then you go around the corner and go up the hill, and it comes back around. Yep. Let me see here. What Ohlone College? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's on Mission. Oh, yep. Ohlone College. Yeah. I remember yeah. Ohlone College, I think. I ran that route for three three days a week for 15 years. I know every damn Oh, my God. I, oh God. I do this twice a week, and it's bad enough. Mm. All the way up to Sacramento, down to Modesto, over to Davis. So what car are you in tonight? I uh, Cadillac CT6. Yeah, not the McLaren for sure. Uh, okay. There's too many too many truckers on the road, and they're crazy drivers. Oh, here's a bunch of Teslas. You want to see the Teslas? <laughs> oh, boy. A bunch of Teslas. There's a Tesla a big auto yeah, trailer hauler thing. Oh, a Tesla oh, truck? Like they're called portable no, parking cars. Ride. Tesla cars. Oh, Tesla cars. Yeah, there's cars. like nine, nine cars on the carrier. Oh. They're yeah, called portable, no portable parking deal. lots. Is that what we they call them? Tesla's all the time around here. Yeah. Well, you know. I live in a cul-de-sac of 10 houses. Three of my neighbors have a Tesla. I don't think I'll ever own a car again. Thank mm -hmm. God. At the rate I'm going. Oh, why? What? Why? Well, I mean, you know, I'll tell you, there's no reason to right now. The cost of cars is incredible. The yeah. cost of the gas to put them in is getting higher and higher and higher and higher, you know. Oh, yeah. I paid 98 bucks for fuel just day before yesterday. Yeah. How much? 20, How much? It wasn't even $98 to fill my tank. How big is your tank? Well, it was only three quarters empty. It was 20 gallons, 98 bucks. Oh, my. My God, 
That's yeah. But you know, I'm actually shopping for a new like F-150. I think Ford calls it the Transit Van. Two years ago, I could have bought the brand new one for forty-one thousand, but the gouging going on because of the economy. Now they're sixty thousand brand. New. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's the well, I was saying last night that people who have leased a car and their lease is up and now they have a chance of either buying out the thing or whatever should buy out the thing because they're buying it at the rate they would have gotten like two years ago or three Absolutely. years ago for the car. And Absolutely. then you've got all that. You could sell the car for more than it's worth. Probably. Or with any, yeah, any bar. Cars are going for a fortune. Yeah. The chip shortage, they're saying. Yeah. But, but yeah. do you really believe it's a chip shortage? Yeah. I, really? Because you look at the lots. You look at the car lots and they're empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I just don't buy that as the only excuse. I mean, I, I here here's what I find. Uh, it's COVID. No, in my <laughs> lifetime, in my lifetime, this has been a regular thing. Uh, things would get uh, more expensive. Okay, because of something. Oh, we've got we're having a war in some place, and the 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 prices are going up. But as soon as that war is over, they'll come down. But as soon as that war is over, they don't come don't down. Come down. Which used to upset me so much because in the Bay Area here, yeah, every time these refineries out here in Richmond and you know over in uh, Emeryville and mm -hmm. all that, yeah, there would be a fire over there. Mm -hmm. And the gas would go up 25 cents like that. Right. You go out, you know, to Concord and all that where all the, the refineries are. They would There would be a fire or, a, or an explosion or a pipe would shut down or something. Mm -hmm. And it would go up 25, 30 cents. But did it ever come down? Oh, maybe a dime or a nickel. And it, it was ladder. It would ladder. It would go up and then down a little bit. Up a lot, down a little yeah. bit up and it never would come all the way back down and well, then they'd come in and say well it's a california spring fuel we're cut doing now. yeah right and it's right. a california winter fuel that we're mixing now and it never came down no then the prices never came down and the thing is that years ago i remember that there was a shortage on marijuana and so the prices went up on marijuana and then after there was no shortage any longer the price never went down and right. i said well they've learned the dealers have learned how from american business yep. how you get the prices up and keep them there yeah and this is exactly what happens you know i mean uh you know well uh, they, they had that you know back a ways they had the wafer shortage the wafer shortage in the you know the computer business and, and the, the wafers were shorted and i remember that and the prices went up and they never came down. Yeah, and in that particular shortage, uh, Nabisco wafers, the price went all uh, over. Yeah, the that's course. ridiculous, you know. Yeah, because they we couldn't get them. They, they Wheat thins <laughs> followed right behind it. They couldn't get that the filling that went in between them. So they had right. they had to buy them from like Thailand, I think. Get them from Keebler. Yeah. yeah. No, do, but I, do you think that do you think Tesla, I mean, you know the the electric cars, do you think they're making a dent in that kind of gas economy? That now they're raising prices, thinking that this is going to take over one day, or it's not even making a dent yet. Um, I don't think so. I assume you're not a Tesla shareholder, Brian. Mm. No, I'm just saying in volume, you know. If, if <clears throat> so, at, I mean, at the share here there's Teslas everywhere. Right. Every five cars. Is a Tesla. Yeah, but you know, Tesla isn't the only name in the game any longer. Right. Well, yeah, and they're all pre-sold too. Yeah. yeah. But they're in the, more. They're in the but, charging stations. Yes, Brian. Oh. What were you, wait, let, let Brian talk. What were you saying? No, no. I, I just just want to throw out there. I mean, Tesla is diversifying, and I sold all my Tesla stock, and I put in uh, hardwood floors. So I have no <laughs> skin in the, I have no skin in the game anymore. But um, <clears throat> they're into the charging stations now around here in the Northeast. Wawa is a really really big outfit, and we got these fucking Tesla stations for charging these electric cars and they're filled with they're filled with cars hooked to them so you know even if you are going to drive some other brand car you're going to be hooking to a tesla you know they got they got some stuff going on i don't know tesla's not out of the game yet well, well, I, I didn't say they were well, out of the always, game yeah, but always, i just said I, they're into other shit they're, they're, i own stock in tesla and the shareholders meeting which i watched on video 
Elon Musk says that the Model 3 is about ready to outpace any car in 2021. It was the second most bought car in 2021. And they are they are they are licensing the technology to Ford and General Motors and stuff so they can build electric cars. He estimates in 20 years the majority of cars on the road, mm -hmm. trucks and everything will be electric. Well, how much but how so, much but how, so what do you think I mean, gas prices will be then? Yeah, out yeah, thirty dollars a gallon. Yeah, that's my point. Is that do you think they're get they're feared that there's you know that they won't need gas, so they're going to start juicing up the price? I, I don't know. You better do it now because people won't be needing gas well, in twenty years. Volume does bring prices down, so it, it's not a crackpot idea to think. Unless that you're did. in the Bay Area, like Kevin was pointing out earlier. Well, wait a minute. Let let we please let uh, Ke Brian finish. What uh, you're saying. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, volume does bring prices down, so it's not a crackpot idea to say that. Gas prices will skyrocket as electric takes over. Oh, yeah. We all think they will. It well, will. I I would say eventually, given I don't know, not my lifetime certainly, you know, um, who knows how long I'm going to live, but in my lifetime, I'm not probably not going to see it. But I think within the next uh, thirty years, we're going to see us all electric when it comes oh. to cars. I, I think this idea of using fossil fuel, of which, believe it or not, there's only a limited supply of this stuff. I mean, we're going to run out someday. You know, we we use alternate energy in this in this state and other states a lot. We don't. A lot of our power is done by by natural gas, but we also have a lot of windmills all throughout the state. Yeah, and we have a lot of solar all throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're, 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 and we have hydro. Can I propose something here? And I, I, I know it's going to meet with a great deal of griping. Uh, I believe in nuclear power. I do too. Yeah. You yep. know, I believe it'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's a problem, it will. Well, you know what it is, though, Charlie? We're afraid of things we can't see. You know, you can see fire, you can see fumes, you can see all these other things that can get you. But nuclear is invisible, okay? And um, the point is that it's not as dangerous. Because if you think about all the deaths that have come from fossil fuels as a result of uh, polluting the atmosphere and polluting people's lungs, uh, what, can you point to a major disaster outside of Chernobyl, which was Fukushima? An, Fukushima was was not because of the nuclear power plant; it was because of the of the tsunami, an earthquake. Yep, an earthquake, uh, and I think we learned a lot from that. Uh, well, I mean, what, what did we learn from that? That an on off that not having an off switch to. I mean, I just think. I'm one of these people who believes that mm -hmm. everything is just steady, right? Like, I, I believe that, like, the, the, you go to nuclear power, it's going to solve a whole bunch of problems, and then you just cause a bunch of problems. You stick with fossil fuel, you avoid a ton of problems, but then you still have the same old problem. Like, it, it's almost like it's like a level playing ground. No matter what you do, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I, I'm not sold on nuclear, but I, I, but I'm not sold on nuclear. Oh, 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 wait a minute! <laughs> my God, I almost crashed. All right. <laughs> what was that? That was my phone going off. Oh, that was your phone going off? Because yeah. when I clicked to Ray, it happened all of a sudden. I was ready to blame Ray for it. You know? No, it's my. Uh... <laughs> Bertha ringtone. I've never seen that Big Bertha. I almost ran off the road. Sorry. No, I was going to say <laughs> is is that if we think about all the deaths that come from uh, diesel fuel and from fossil fuels and from breathing fossil fuels and the global warming and the tornadoes that exist as a result of it and on and on, we could go on and on, and then you, you put that against nuclear power and Fukushima and Chernobyl, and they're pretty minor by comparison. 
The night is still young. <laughs> well, well, like, yeah. you know, we gotta what, we gotta what, learn what, where to build second, nuclear Ray. plants. In Fukushima, it's right by the ocean. We have them in Southern California. Where at? Right on a fault line, right by yeah. the ocean. Yeah, well, Indian Indian Point. The problem is, if you have a, a, a an accident at a nuclear plant, mm -hmm. it the it place is uninhabitable for a hundred thousand years. Well, more parking spaces. That went spaces up in Mar-a-Lago. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, yes, Ray. Yeah, I I was listening to this. I just. I wanted to say, uh, just people don't know this, but um, over 70% of France's power comes from nuclear power. And uh, all of their plants are state of the art. And uh, the chances of, of an accident are so low. Bullshit. And, uh, that bullshit. I'm an astrophysicist. I studied physics for four years. There's no such thing as a safe power plant. Well, I listen to you. Safe. I'm Mr. Physics. No I'm telling you, that's safe. dangerous okay. shit. Okay, also... It lasts also, for hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, also, uh, burning coal releases tons of radioactive material wow. in the air. So coal's not safe. That doesn't make nuclear okay. safe. Okay, so France has been doing this for so many decades, it never had a problem. Well, well let's France go. is let's stupid. Let's... France is going to have a problem. And when Germany, they do have a and problem, Germany. thousands of people are going to die a day. Okay, all right. Well, let me, let me, all this nuclear waste in the ground in tanks that only last 50 years. Okay, let me well, ask you. They haven't been doing it 50 but years they, yet, so the tanks haven't started leaking yet. They reuse the rods now. They reuse them, but they still get nuclear waste from that reuse. Yes. Right, and there's nuclear waste from burning f fossil fuels, which we do like crazy. As, like I said, just because one thing is bad doesn't mean that something else is good. But how are we going to power everything with solar going forward? I mean, in the California, we're lucky. The sun, we have us, the sun gives us enough energy to power the entire world's energy supply a hundred really? times over every day. Yes. Mining the rare earth metals <laughs> wait, 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 to make hold, the solar panels does not do it. Gotta, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Brian brought up something. Brian, bring it up again. But mining the rare earth metals to make the solar panels doesn't do it. Unfortunately. Obama was right when he said it's not going to be all wind, it's not going to be all solar, it's not going. To, it, it's this very boring. It's got to be a little bit of everything. Yeah. It's the, it's the age old the, the proverb that it, it's balance. It's the yin and the yang. You got to have balance. And the problem is, it's a little nuclear, it's a little fossil fuel, yeah. and and we can't go in either direction. And the reason why it's not satisfactory is because. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like, oh, everything we're doing is bad and we have this like utopian idea of something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. The idea is, oh, it's a little bit of everything. And that is actually very demoralizing. But the truth is, is that's the truth, is that it's gotta be a little bit of everything. You can't go all nuclear, can't go all solar, can't go all wind. You can't do any of, all of anything. It's just, it, it's just a shit show is what it is. And maybe population's the issue, but for fuck's sake, let's not get involved with that. Yeah. You know, uh, but, uh, uh, Alan had making, his hand up. Stop making babies. Brian, you ought to come on the show more often. You're an interesting guy. Yeah, you are. It's <clears throat> true. Uh, but, I mean, I, my question is, I guess, just an academic one, and you guys can answer it for me. When we have electric cars, got to plug them in. You got to get the electricity from somewhere. Where does that electricity come from? And what are we using up in order to get that electricity? And what are they made for? They're, ma they're made of. They're made of lithium. They're metals. They're, they're, they've got waste. <laughs> everything has, everything that you make, everything that you've made, the, the solar panels, I know the gases that they use to make those. The gases that they use to make those are extremely dangerous. Silane, um, there's... Uh, uh, what's the other one? Tungsten hexafluoride, I think, is used to make some of those things. There are so many different gases that are used to make those. The metals that they use, they all got to be disposed of, so we're going to have that problem. Everything yeah, has a management, a risk years. management element to it. Nuclear does, coal does, fuel does. Everything has a risk management element to it, and you just got to well, pick. Well, aren't we, oh, shouldn't we say that anything that works is good, but anything that works is also dangerous? That's right. You know, and that what we're talking about are things that work. 
You pick your poison. Timothy Leary. Yeah. Yeah. Timothy Leary said that. He said anything that works is bad. You can boil an egg or you can you can burn yourself to death. Yeah, yeah and you know that, Charlie. I mean, you know that for a fact. Yeah. So That's I mean, it so, is, and I know I mean what you're my question too. is so so we is, nuclear is probably one of the worst. So we go to all electric automobiles. The electricity has to come from somewhere. And how are we going to get, get that? You know, are we going to burn some fossil fuels to make the electricity? <clears throat> you know, got to stop doing that, I guess. But then again, I, I don't know. Have you ever gone out on the road and seen these windmill farms? Yeah, I'm driving. Texas. Yeah, I'm driving right up to Ultima. Ultima Pass has a whole. Uh, I know. I I was gonna. I was. Look gonna, at all the birds are killing. Damn it! I, yeah. I was gonna I mean, mention Ultima. Airplanes. I'm, I'm, gl all I'm airplanes. glad you mentioned Ultima Pass because I used to drive over that to go see Kathleen and Tracy. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, every time started. I went, the first time I went there, I went, "Oh my God, this is." incredible these all these all these wind turbines up there it's just terrific and about the 20th time i went you know this is fucking ugly you know <laughs> half of them didn't work there's nothing uglier than a nuclear power plant well uh, but nothing more beautiful than a nuclear explosion okay so uh, especially if you're 100 miles away well i'm not you know i'm not saying you know i think we can have nuclear power and have it be safe but we have to be very careful until we figure out what to do with the waste but, and then, well, to China. we have been doing nuclear energy since the 50s and we've never figured out what to do with the waste all we do is keep putting mm -hmm. it in containers and burying it in the ground in the bottom well of the i would suggest burying it in russia right now yeah that texas be yeah. texas is pretty big yeah, really. There's a lot of land. Dig some holes, Mary. <laughs> yeah, Put the, right. the spent nuclear rods in Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the trouble is it contaminates the ground forever. Yeah. yeah. Once Look, they start leaking, there's nothing you can do about it except move. You know, uh, uh, what are we going to say here other than the human race is going to ruin this planet one Absolutely. way or another? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it, it's, going to? Huh? I said going to? Well, okay, yeah. already has, all right? Hmm. You know. So so one thing, you know, Kevin, you talked about the nuclear pan the the nuclear, the uh solar panels to make them. There's a there's a place on your way to Las Vegas along highway, whatever that is coming out of California, going up to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. where they have thousands of mirrors. And what they do is they when the sun is aimed in a certain direction, hits the mirror. These thousands of mirrors all shoot a light beam up to a tower. Mm -hmm. It super boils the water, turns it into steam, yeah. generates a turbine, and recycles the steam. It's very cool. And they're just mirrors. And the mirrors move as the earth moves. The mirrors move. And the sun hits them at different mirrors. At different, it's a huge place. And every you don't need amazed, any rare earth metals for that. Is that what they use? I, no, they don't. That's what no. I'm saying. You don't need it. No, for it's, that it's kind very, of it's very problem. safe. It's a, uh, you know, as long as the mirror doesn't blind you or something. But it, mm. these mirrors send an intense beam, thousands of mirrors, up towards this tower that's, you know, 250 feet in the air, and it boils the water, turns it into steam, spins generators. The generators uh, produce electricity. It's a, I don't know if it's a test area. When I drive out to Vegas, it's there, and I'm surprised they haven't set it up elsewhere. Maybe it's very expensive. I don't well, know. Well, you know, let's let's go back to before there were cars, okay? Yeah. We say, oh, it's well, got to be much better, right? Much safer, uh, not as much pollution. Horses. Uh, horse shit piled <laughs> this high, right? Yeah. On, yeah. on every street in America, yeah. okay? Yes. Well, I mean, they didn't even think about using the methane gas. They just went, how do we get rid of all this horse shit? But that's what came out of it was methane gas. Methane gas. Global warming. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yeah. They started wait, it wait, all. Wait, wait. Somebody, somebody just said, hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, I, I'm a big believer in peak oil, like you touched on. I mean, I, I don't know when it's going to fucking hit, but I think that, you know, I mean, Oil is just nothing but yesterday's sunlight. So you only have yes. so much of yesterday's sunlight. That's right. But is it worth thinking about 
on, on, on a more like uh, doom and gloom level. Is so we're thinking about like, okay, if we go like all nuclear around the world, you know, if an asteroid hit the Earth the size of Texas, it would put us in a nuclear winter and set us back, you know, 500,000 years. But what if uh, one hits the Earth that's half the size of Rhode Island? Well, then now you have all these nuclear power plants that sets us back even further. Like, I mean, if you want to think about what we're doing to the Earth, like... I'm lost. Something hits what, us anywhere. Because cause, cause a nuclear power plant unattended is a catastrophe. And if we have a major, major cataclysmic event in this on this Earth, mm-hmm. we're not going to be able to manage these nuclear power plants. I mean, isn't that an issue? Isn't that worth thinking about? No? Well, then we'll be set back a million years instead of 300,000. That, that's my point. Well, well then, but who cares? I mean, I think I think if all, we get hit, one of them, if we get done. hit with a rock the size of Rhode Island, the the Earth will will you know if they're not whoever's not killed from the 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 even if it hits the ocean, you know it's going to oh, create yeah. a huge tidal wave. It's going to kill a lot of people, yeah, uh, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And then everybody will die from nuclear winter or something like that is what they say. Yes, I don't know. Charlie. But, yeah, I just want to point out that if those planes that f- flew into the World Trade Center had instead flown into a nuclear power plant, they'd have killed a lot more people. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what the yeah. big problem is uh, today? Uh, we got the news from the Ukraine that guess what the Russians are taking over? Yeah, they're and trying to take over Chernobyl. They're trying to take they're over trying to take Chernobyl. Over Chernobyl. The land is poisoned. What do they want it for? Hmm. They can use it as a threat. Well, they were afraid that the Russians were actually going to bomb Chernobyl. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that would devastate Europe. Just devastate Europe. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. yes, Jeff. I, I think I have a question that probably Charlie is, is the best guy to answer this, but what happens if I have a, a car... That's a hybrid car. In other words, it has a certain amount of batteries yep. mm-hmm. and a certain amount of gas. Okay, is the amount of uh, of those batteries permanent? What do you mean? The as far as an environmental stuff, after I'm done with that car. Well, that that is a, a, an issue with the electric cars. Is what do you do when the you know, if you drive it for 15, 20 years or whatever, and the batteries are, are, you have to replace the batteries during the life of the car, too. What do you do with the dead batteries? Yeah, so yeah. That, uh, Jeff, that's a, that, that battery in that car, I've got one, it's a Prius, and my my father-in-law just replaced it. It's just a bigger battery. But, but, <clears> but, <throat> but they're recycling um, uh, lithium batteries constantly. Oh yeah. Tesla, yeah. Tesla okay. claims let, let, let's let's talk let's let's talk about lithium lithium batteries for for a second here. Mm-hmm. Did you hear about the twelve hundred Porsches that all got destroyed on this yeah. freighter because uh, the yes. lithium batteries blew? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that they found that out? Is that what yeah. started the fire? Yep. I hadn't oh. heard that. Wow. Wow. So yeah. how about that for your lithium batteries, yeah. pal? Yep, they heat up and they blow up. Yes, Jeff. Uh, one s- small solution that I've seen, which is very interesting, is there's a whole bunch of kids running around on these little bicycle things uh, that are battery powered motors, and they can get to work. You're talking about the, school. what do you call it? The, uh, what do they call it? Uh, 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 yeah, scooters, scooters electro no, no, scooters, not scooters, but you, you know you, you scooters and the stand up Segway thing. Yeah, Segway, yeah. Stand on. yeah, yeah, Segways. And I mean, you got to think about it for just from basic transportation, it's got to be more efficient than than having a. There's no a, heater. A big expense. If it snows or rains, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, rain, the source. Great for, great for you know, you know not. Great for a for a nice day, but not in the cold or the rain or at night. Yeah, yeah it's pitching yeah. at the pump. Yeah, right? is it? Hmm? What? I just wanted to know if anybody knows anything about fuel cell cars. 
The hydrogen? The hydrogen fuel cell. I see I see a bunch of them around. They're in, the area, all over. They're, they're they're in yeah. comp competition. The company I used to work for, we were, and there still are, deep in that. It's a big competition with the, um, the, the electric vehicles. And, and they're pretty safe. And the yeah. only the only thing they kick out is uh, water vapor. Yeah. Okay, but how long do these fuel cells last? Well, it's you got to refuel them. It's just it's like a, getting gas. You, you just you, go to a gas station. They're high pressure fuel cells. There, I think they're five thousand psi fuel cells that they put on these cars. Yeah. They're pretty safe. I mean, you know, they're cylinders basically. You fill them with water. No, you fill them with hydrogen. 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 Well, they have hydrogen stations at the gas stations now. Ooh. There's a bunch of them over here in California. Yeah. And yep. you just go the gas up there station and... around the corner from me, uh, Valero, that has a hydrogen refueler. Yeah, and that's that's probably our old our old company, my old company's gas. What's better, do you think, hydrogen or or uh, the batteries? It's cleaner. It's electric. Hydrogen it's... is very clean. The the byproduct. Yeah, you can just stick your lips on the on good. the gas pipe and or the exhaust pipe and water because it's just water coming out yeah. yeah yeah i don't understand why we're not so why that. aren't we doing that over electric well, well, i don't know the hindenburg it's experimental yeah, the <laughs> hindenburg exactly <laughs> and it's, it's a high pop it's high pressure tanks too and what do you happen and if you have a car wreck in a tank well that's the point and and these tanks i'll tell you i worked around them for 20 years and you can take those tanks and throw them off a truck at 65 miles an hour and throw them down the road, and they won't break. Well, well, and, not, a, not, not if it lands oh, okay. on the valve. Let me, let not me, if it lands let... on the valve, but these don't have valves, number one. Uh, they're protected. Uh, we had one that was uh, – we had to go mitigate one over outside a junkyard that was pulled out of a car. Mm -hmm. They're this thick. I mean, they're pretty potent. Okay, and, uh, let me I ask you a question. Hold on a second. He's brought a lot of buses. Let me, let, me buses. A, let me ask you guys a question here. When was the American automobile, as we know it, first put on the market? 19, what? 1909. 1909, you'd say? Yeah. Okay, yeah, about I'm that kind of like 1909. Yeah, yeah. Model A. Yeah, but, but there was another automobile at the time. Electric. Was an Stanley electric. Stanley Steamer. The Stan Stanley Steamer. Exactly. Yeah. The Stanley Steamer. Yep. Yay. Which, what a win. Yeah. Which really, actually, it ran on water. Yeah. Okay. How That's did, where I thought you were going earlier. How did, how, did it, how did it create the steam? Did you have to put a, <laughs> put logs in the front of it or something? Pretty much. <laughs> Probably. Is that how it worked? I believe so. It's fire and you boil it up. Jay Leno. Jay Leno has one. The Stanley Steamer, yeah. I heard there were a bunch of electric cars, too, at that time, and they kind of got pushed out by the gas-powered yeah. cars. Yeah, but electricity wasn't uh, per really perfected they, at that time. They couldn't store electricity very well yeah. at that time. Yeah, yeah. And battery technology was And those cars were very low. The problem with the electric cars back then is that you couldn't find The problem was coming up with an extension cord that was long enough. That's it. <laughs> But um bump, okay. Not really, but anyway. Wow. Well, I had a I had a discussion today with somebody. They said, "Isn't it neat that Tesla is ran by direct current?" I said, "Well, the battery cells are direct current, but it changes to alternating current." And they're like, "No, they're 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 DC motors at the wheels." I'm like, "No, you have you have you ever heard of Nikola Tesla? He's yeah. the godfather or the or the the father of AC electric." Mm -hmm. Why would they name the car Tesla if they were going to use DC motors? Well, got, uh, he had no concept of how you convert DC to AC. Oh, wait a minute. We're shopping for, let's see, this is oh, a, man. is this a supermarket or is this a, a convenience yeah. store? A supermarket? Supermarket. Yep. Uh, eggs are on sale there, Ray. I'm getting my non-alcoholic beer. Why? Yeah, I, really. I, don't, why? I can't drink much anymore. I can't handle it for some reason. Yeah, so. Know so, the feeling. So you get yeah. non-alcoholic beer. What do you want to do? Fool yourself? Yep. Yeah. It works. It works. Yeah. It works. <laughs> you can yeah. drink it on the way home too. By the way, yeah, it, it, it turns out this guy by the name of Len LaFrisco calls our Monday show, and it turns out somebody reminded me I owe him five dollars. <laughs> because he put five dollars in a slot machine at the Las Vegas airport yeah. for me, 
and it didn't come up with anything. So I owe him five bucks. So at Len, the if you're airport, hmm? I've been to Las Vegas airport. Slots are all over the place. I never see anybody winning anything there. Oh yeah, that's the worst place to win. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, donations. Uh, oh yeah. God. Well, no, they have no reason to uh, have you win there. I played a quarter machine with twenty dollars. There was waiting for a flight. I got nothing. Yeah. Except for a loss of my twenty dollars. Yeah. Well, that's it's they like to get the last penny you've got. Oh yeah. You that's know what you do. You know works. what you do at the at, at the slot machines at the airport in in Vegas, and Reno and wherever. Uh, you actually just spend the money that's the change in your pockets you know they want to just they kind of want to uh, just get everything they can yeah. out of you just drain it all out yeah. until the last penny what is that sail away poster in the background it's almost like he's at a restaurant yeah. or something but he's mm -hmm. not he's still in florida I know. The water. he's leaving tomorrow i know that's what he said yeah yeah it sounded like he's going to crawl back to Connecticut. And now we're going out <laughs> into the parking lot where you're going to get mugged. Right? You know, right? he's going to steal another there's car a, for his trip home. There's a Tesla. There's a Tesla. Yeah, there's a Tesla. Imagine that, <laughs> Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we're everywhere. to see them in Texas now. They're oh, crazy. my God. Like, I, I can walk around my neighborhood. One day I did, and I counted 45 Teslas. I think it was 45. Yeah. I took pictures of every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. 45 Teslas. Wow. Yep. Well, he lives in the Bay Area where Tesla was, you know, headquartered. The plant. I, I, I literally live uh, a mile from the Tesla dealership, so. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I live, yeah. I live a mile and a half north of the Tesla. Now, I was told by somebody who said they, I uh, can't remember, was the other night, that if you drive past a parking, uh, past, a, past dealerships today, the, the lots are empty. You know, there are just no cars available. What about Teslas? Are Teslas readily available or are they on back? So when, when, when we just bought ours, yeah, uh, we bought ours six months ago when we paid, when we went in to get it ordered. Mm -hmm. the, the dealership at Santana Row had about six of them on display and they had about six of them that you could test drive. By three months from there, by about three months ago, they had none in the showroom and none you could test drive because they had sold everything they had. Yeah. Now they're starting to get them back. Hey, They've Brian, new, you uh, bought a Tesla? You Sorry. You bought a Tesla there and then you bought the other car next door? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> Brian's wife, got six cars. But, he bought a so I, no, 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 no. No, I'm down to four. So <laughs> is there a thing? Wife. You bought a Tesla <laughs> and then next door you went over and bought a McLaren. <laughs> wow. yeah, well, when I you test drove the time. when I test drove the McLaren, I had to give in on the Tesla for her. So Wow. So awesome. Is there a thing about Tesla dealers that they leave the lights on in the cars at night? Yeah, Santana Road they do. See they do that down here in Gilroy now. I notice that and as I drive by the Gilroy dealer, it's right on the freeway, and every time I drive by there's five cars. There's only five cars in the whole lot. Maybe a couple up by the building itself, but they park the five down by the freeway, and you drive by on the freeway, and at night, there's those five cars, and every one of them have their headlights on. There's no one around the building at all. Mm -hmm. And then you go yeah. by later on at night, and they're off. It's like for, they're on for three or four hours to say, I guess people go, hey, look, those Tesla lights are on. And it's an advertisement. Yeah, it might be just an advertisement to have yeah. people like me ask why are they on, but. Yeah, I figured maybe that was a, a thing that Tesla does. My son bought a, a used one from the dealer because they used them up. Yeah, yeah. And, you know the people were the just demo cars. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I always wondered whether they did that as a as a gimmick. Do they do okay, it? Okay, let me let me just ask Sa you this. Santana, Santa, 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 let, let me ask you this. How many miles can you get on a charge with a Tesla? Three hundred and something. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. Time yeah I that's heard. what I was figuring. Okay, that's pretty good. I could live with that. You know, halfway to L.A. But then, how long does yeah. it take it to get it to a full charge? 
hour and a half. Yeah, the super yeah, the supercharger. So, or yeah, you... so so if you're in if you're in Northern California, like like San Jose, mm -hmm. and if we're gonna go drive down to LA, you you can put on the computer or on the you know on the the Tesla computer that you're going to this spot, like the hotel in Anaheim, let's say, mm -hmm. and it'll plan your route and tell you several restaurants and, and places that you can stay and go get charged and then you'll still make it. And how long, so will say like, how long will the charge take for a full charge? Hour and a half. Yeah, it's an hour and a half, but, but you can still, they'll say that you can go and have lunch at this place yeah. or all these different places and you can do a half hour and you'll still make it down there. Okay. Even down here in Texas, mm -hmm. we're seeing more Teslas on the road. Yeah. But uh, the 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 big thing that I'm seeing uh, here in the Dallas Fort Worth area, people ordering the new electric Mustangs. Oh yeah. Yeah. These things are hot. Uh, a, a buddy of mine, his two sons, who are you know in their late twenties, early thirties have bought themselves electric Mustangs and uh, they are quick, fast, and in a hurry. Made me want to change my Depends when I drove my road to <laughs> one. And uh, I just can't get the over trouble an electric. The Mustangs are, it's great if you only have two people, the driver and somebody else. There's no room in the back seat. Well, I haven't been in the back okay, seat. Okay, but let me ask you this. Uh, mm. uh, uh, Brian, uh, do you have a charger at home? Obviously, you do, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and it's just like the it's just like the washer and dryer charger. Mm-hmm. And you know, not charger, but the washer and dryer plug, mm -hmm. and that'll do a full charge in eight hours. In so eight hours. So she, dri she drives. Yeah, so she drives it to work. She'll drive it back home, and she'll plug it in when she gets home. Or now we have a card at work that she can charge it for free at work. Okay, is the charger at work a, 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 a fast charger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fast charger. So you not, go not to, the one hour, an hour and a half, but it's like four hours. When you go to work, that's for a full charge, right? Yeah. But you probably don't need a full charge when you're at work. Exactly. Right. She does it like every three days. So right? you you just plug the thing in, go in, do your job. When you come out, it's all charged up for you. It's all Full those, charge, yeah. All yeah. those fossil fuels and nuclear mm -hmm. plants that are keeping his charge going. Yeah, yeah. How much does it cost you to charge that at at your own house? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. As compared to, I'm not sure. As 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 comparing it to the because cost obviously it's going to yeah, cost you it's going to cost you some money, right? Right. You know. Yeah, and we just got it, so that's why she's been charging at work now. But we just got it, so I haven't seen our bill come through. But those and those those Mustang, they're Mach E's, they're called that, mm -hmm. that Jack's talking about, and those are like forty five, forty seven thousand dollars. I mean, they're relatively mm -hmm. cheap for yeah. a car that you you don't have to pay gas for, and they, Ford still has a lot of money that they're giving as rebates. Tesla is pretty worn out on that now. Now, what's going on down here is uh, our state government is trying to figure out a way to tax these electric cars because, you know, oh, all yeah, of our yeah. money, yeah, it comes from, you know, either property tax or gas tax. And so these And then your grid of, can shut down when it gets iced up. Woohoo! Hey, hey, <laughs> hey get, listen, we've had two bad storms here in the last, what, 10 days charlie yeah yeah and we have not lost most of our electricity yet but i heard you oh. guys yeah <laughs> you got his fingers yes. <laughs> uh but i heard you guys talking about steam cars and uh everybody mentions the stanley but the one that really got the thing working right came after the stanley called the doble and mm -hmm. you don't hear much about dobles mm -hmm. but the Stanley, the problem with, with it was getting the uh, the uh, uh, furnace up to temperature in time for you to go to work, you know. But the Doble had some kind of system to it that uh, it did it in a relatively reasonable length of time. And they built the Dobles up until the early 30s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, they never, mm, yeah. They never well, okay, Brian, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who was it that was just talking about how the the gas tax is not floating anymore? So that they got to figure out. 
In Texas. Uh, oh, in Texas. Yeah, that's, yeah. Because yeah. we don't have an income tax. We don't have a state income I, I, tax. I, I really feel like, you know, this whole thing with with trying to figure out what's more economical has nothing to do with what's good for the environment. Okay. It, 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 because, I mean, you know, it, it's almost like a ruse. Like if you could suppress costs mm -hmm. or externalize costs in some way possible temporarily, you could corner a market and, and infiltrate, but then you just, you, you, you create an infrastructure that is, that is much bigger than, you know, mm -hmm. uh, say something mm -hmm. else like the status quo. Yeah. So instead of going fossil fuel, we go electric, blah, 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 which could be either fossil fuel or nuclear. And, and there's issues with one or more than the other. But like, it, it's weird. It, it's like, it's like, it's like almost, it's almost like you have to pick what you really want. It, is it, is it cost benefit hmm. or is it going to be environmental? Well, Brian, the best way to figure it out is go back to about 1967, 66. Mm -hmm. Listen to the Beatles and Tax Man. Yeah. They explain it all. All you uh, need to uh, know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, the one thing that that I think we all have to consider, and and Alex, you're one of those people. You don't have a car. You don't go anywhere other than using some other transportation. Mm-hmm. That means you're consuming a lot less gas. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. with all those My my son uh, lives in Manhattan. He uh, he doesn't have a car. He works at home most of the time. My daughter works mostly um, at home mm -hmm. four days a week and only comes to work one day a week. Wow. And and those things are reducing the amount of gas. Well, look at me. Oh, I'm e I'm, I'm, eco I'm ecologically sound. I don't own a car. That's I'm not right. using. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, I'm not using oh, fossil fuel. Oh, thank you, Alex. <laughs> Even here in Texas, my wife has been working at home for five years. She's go. got gas that she bought in August in her car. <laughs> not good. What gasoline. Do you think it was gasoline. Good, but but I'm saying she's got it, you know. Well, the gasoline, what did you say? It, it degrades. After yeah. a few months, it, it starts going bad. You need to keep it fresh. Oh. But. Yeah, oh, you say it's kind of like, it's kind of like Nookie? <laughs> a Nookie, you need it within right now. Yeah. I knew, I knew you'd bring us down to that level. Okay. Damn See it, you for the intersection in just a few minutes. Hey, wait, I'm trying to remember, Ray. Is that an Eichler home you live in? Yes. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. because I can tell by the ceiling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they originally sold for nineteen hundred. Now they're uh, three and a half million. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you used to be able to get it with green stamps. <laughs> SNH green stamps. Yeah. There, there was this guy Eichler that after the war started building these kind of. They're not. They weren't prefab, but they were. You know. Well, they don't have a subfloor, and there's no attic. Right, it's a so they're just on a slab, a concrete slab. Right, but they did have, they did have, if I'm not mistaken, they had radiant heating, right? We do have radiant heating, and ours still works. And I bought a really good pump for it about 25 wow. years ago, yeah. and it's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I got to play the theme here. Oh wow. Well, it's been a good discussion we've had here. Yeah. This is different, and we didn't mention, the, uh, for, for the most part, the Ukraine tonight. Which is uh, okay. what happened? Something happened. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. I just asked yeah. Ghirardelli. Oh, Ghirardelli. I was just gonna say, I want to guess where where he is right now. You go up I five, you're right by Lathrop Road, right? Yeah, I just passed. I'm passing go through Lathrop right now. You shouldn't have said Ghirardelli. I was gonna guess Lathrop Road if you go up I five. Well, yeah. we're back. See, to, we're back to that. Name where he, sick. where Brian's at. Yeah, yeah. Not a good. Uh, thank French you, camp. thank you very much, uh, French uh, camp and Kevin. then Charter Way. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate it, and thank you, uh, Alan, as well. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Thank you to the other Brian. This one, uh, which is spelled uh, with a different, it's uh, with a Y as opposed to an A. 
And uh, no, it, it, come back more fine. often, Brian. You're really smart, and we enjoy that, you know, as opposed yeah. to as opposed to a couple of us who are dumb. Uh, and and thanks to, to Ray Renati as well. Everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, that's it. Jack will be next. He's here with the intersection. I'll be back again tomorrow night, 1030, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And whatever you do, please... Get vaccinated if you haven't been. And if you uh, uh, don't get vaccinated, then wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, don't get anywhere near me. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Jack is next with The Intersection. Bye.